Oh, that's all. Coach. <laughs> Good to see you again. Absolutely. How was practice? It's good. Very good. All right, we are ready to begin with the uh, Wolfpack of North Carolina State. Uh, Coach uh, Kevin Keats, student athletes Michael O'Connell, uh, Mohammed Diara, and DJ Burns Jr. I've been leaving Jr. off, DJ. I'm sorry. So we'll get that straight for the rest of the rest of the championship. Uh, we will take a question for Coach to start things off, and then the student athletes will be released at 4 o'clock to report to breakout. So my advice, you might want to um, concentrate some of your questions toward the three guys, and we'll have plenty of time for Coach Keats after we release them. Okay, first question for Coach. I think we have one on... You're right toward the middle. Uh, Chris Vinny, the athletic for uh, coach and DJ. Uh, the fact that this game is Duke, uh, the rivalry, does, what does that add to what's already a monster game? Yeah, I don't. I know it's a. I know it's a, a rivalry, and we're down the street from one another. But I, when you get to this point, you know, I was sitting. There, I was sitting with a group of friends last night as we were watching the game, and everybody's. You know, of course, everybody in the room wants to know who you want to play. And I just said, hey, when you get to this point, you're blessed to be here and you take the opportunity to play whoever you get a chance to play. Um, you know, luckily we have played Duke a couple times, so we are a little bit more familiar with those guys. Um, but they're playing really good basketball and they're doing a great job with it. But it's not one of those things um, where we were just, you know, rooting for one team over the other. I know for um, a lot of NC State fans, it was going to come down to they were hoping that it would be very similar to 83 and playing Houston, but uh, unfortunately it didn't work that way. So we're excited. We just we know that you know when you get down to eight teams left in the entire country to play in the entire basketball, everybody's good. And do, we, even though we played them 18 days ago, it's a different team, and we're a different team also. Who is it you said you wanted also? Okay, DJ. No, I honestly feel the same way. I don't think that he left anything unsaid. <laughs> okay, I think our next question will go on the left on the inside aisle. Yeah, Rob McLean for Inside Pack Sports. This is for all the players. You play for a coach who started as a D3 player, coach prep school, and he's grown in his life to the point where he's a champion. He provides for his family, provides for y'all. Speak to that, to playing for Coach Keats. Does that inspire y'all and the impact he's had on you guys? Let's start with Michael on that one. Yeah, I mean, I would say it just speaks to his dedication throughout it all. You know, he never obviously started at a lower level, so to speak. But, I mean, he always had a confidence in himself to he's going to rise to the occasion and try to take the next step in life. Um, so when you're playing for a guy like that, it always gives you the confidence that when you're out there, it doesn't matter if you're, quote, unquote, playing a better team or better competition where you're just going to go out there and fight and do what you got to do, and you know it can work out. Muhammad? Oh, yeah. That inspired me because, like, I got the same, like, <laughs> same way that Coach Keith. Like, I'm coming from nothing, and he inspired me a lot. And he never quit. He got a winner mentality, and we got the same thing in us. So, appreciate you, Coach. <laughs> Thank you, Mo. <laughs> and DJ, appreciate you want to chime in? Too also. <laughs> yeah. Um, man, yeah, I feel like um, it kind of plays into, you know, the way that our team was built, you know, a lot of us come from other schools, you know, not necessarily at the highest levels. Um, and he's the same way, you know, we all fought to get here. And I think that that's why it's, it was so important to us. And that's why we have such a sense of urgency. Okay, let's go on the right. Thanks. Brett Friedlander, Saturday Road. Um, DJ, which do you enjoy more? Backing a guy in and scoring or getting the double team firing out and having somebody else score? Because yesterday, most of those assists, the look that you were giving the crowd and everybody else kind of suggests that you had a lot of fun doing that. Um, I would say um, that's part of the game. I like them both equally. I like um, all plays that amount to winning. So I don't really have a favorite way to do things. As long as we win, I'm fine. How much fun was that last night, though? Oh, man, last night was, it was really fun, you know. Um, if you're going to double-team, I'm going to try my best to make you pay. So I'm glad we were able to get that done. Yeah, tied his career high in assists. Pretty good. 
Okay, let's swing back to the extreme left now. For Michael and DJ, Stephen Hawkins with the AP. Just talk about how different you see your team from the time you played Duke in the regular season to the time in the tournament, and then from then to now. Yeah, I mean, I think the whole season has kind of just been growth. I mean, from the beginning of the season until now, we've been changing as a team and growing. Um, chemistry has been getting better, and you know, you learn more about each other, and that helps you on the court. So, from the first time we played them, obviously we didn't do things the best, but we learned from there. We continue to grow. Played them the second time, worked in our favor, but from there we've still been growing as a team. Chemistry still been growing, and our confidence has been growing in each other. So, um, and probably the same is for them too. Obviously, as they've been winning games and playing together, they're you know, you grow stronger together. Um, yeah, but for us, it's just been a journey of growth, and it's been great to this point. DJ? Uh, I would say I think it's pretty obvious that, you know, both teams are playing really good basketball, a lot better than the first time we played each other, and especially to this point now. Um, so I think it'll be very interesting this evening. I think our next question will come on the right by the curtain. Corey Smith with Pack Pride on 24-7 Sports. This is for Mo and DJ. Uh, you know, talking to Flip outside, he said one of the big things that led to them losing that second game was you guys creating those second chance opportunities and, and being more physical down low. How important is that going to be tomorrow against this Duke team again? DJ. Uh, I say it's going to be very important. Um, they're a team who can really go at you and be aggressive as well. So I think that that'll be one of the key things is who's more aggressive in the post. Yeah, I would say uh, we got to create the same opportunity. Like, if we got to match up and we can crowd the ball and go at them, we're going to do it. And that's why we played so great last game, and we're going to do the same thing. OK, in the middle here on the left side. Hi, Griffin Cunningham, Agromech and Technician. This is kind of a two-parter for Coach and then the players. Um, I know this might not be where your head's at, but how cool is it to uh, be in the Elite Eight with the women's team as well, and then just for the players, what kind of relationship do you guys have with the women's team? Coach? I think it's, I think it's cool. I mean, I, I think it's what a unique story that, you know, you got two programs that's um, playing at the same, literally yesterday played at the same time and, and both made the um, Elite Eight. And, you know, Wes and I are really, really close. Um, when you think about our paths, we kind of started in a similar path and, you know, obviously started at the D3 level and, you know, mid-major when he was at Chattanooga and me at UNCW. And for us to be here and, you know, living a dream with the opportunity to coach, um, you know, great ladies and great men and teach them the right way, um, it, it's, 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 it's great. I mean, it really is. Their players and our players, um, they're connected. Like, you know, they come to our games and we go to their games and we celebrate with them and they celebrate with us. And um, it's really like a family affair when you think about the, the two basketball programs. And not just that, I think our whole athletic department is kind of, you know, bonded by, you know, the respect that each team has for one another. But when you talk about, you know, they have a common thread, we're, we're basketball players and coaches, and it's really a special deal. Like if you were, you were able to be around our campus and see the support and, you know, just that we give one another, you would, you would say it's great, it's amazing. Didn't you say you wanted all three guys to respond as well? Yeah. Okay, Michael, we'll start with you. Yeah, I think co Coach kind of, you know, hit it on the head, the idea that a whole athletic department, all the teams are pretty close and we all kind of support each other as a whole. Like, no matter what sport it is or who's playing, people always go out and support or just like viewing the games and stuff. And whenever you see each other around campus, always congratulate each other or stop to talk. So um, I, we're definitely, I think we're pretty close to the women's team. Um, we're pretty happy they're winning the games and hopefully they can keep going and win it all. And, you know, we just support them along the way. Mohammed? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, the team is great. The, the women's team is great. They play good all the time, all year long. And yeah, I want to congratulate them to show to the Elite Eight and play at the next level. DJ? Uh, yeah, I say um, I love what the women's team is doing. You know, they, they just played, you know, a great Stanford team and took care of them. And, man, they've been doing their thing all year. Um, they did what we were trying to do in the regular season as well. So, you know, they, they did their thing. And, you know, we were just talking to them last night, you know, over the phone, of course. But, um, man, we're all close. You know, that's what it's all about. It's not just them. It's like the whole athletic department, you know, which is like a little family. Let's go to Zoom now for our next question. Okay, we have a question from Roger. 
Roger, if you would unmute yourself and please state your name and affiliation followed by your question. Uh, Roger Rubin from Newsday in New York. It's a question for all three players. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we talk about March Madness and there's this notion of a Cinderella. Do any of you have a strong reaction, either positively or negatively, to this idea that NC State is a Cinderella in this tournament? And what's the reason for your answer? Let's begin with DJ and come back toward me. Uh, if that's what you want to call it, that's cool. But um, that's not how we feel. And I'll just leave it at that. Honestly, uh, I don't know what that means, though. <laughs> I don't think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we'll t I guess we'll go with whatever label, but at the end of the day, we, we know we can win games. We know we can compete with a lot of people, so I don't know necessarily if we just want to run with that title, but it is what it is. Okay, back in the room now. Let's go in the back by the TV camera. Hey there, Lane Higgins from the Wall Street Journal. DJ, this is for you as well as you, Coach. Um, you know, DJ, you've been on this team, you know, this is your second year now, and it seems like all of this, you know, national attention is finally swirling around you right now. And yet, you know, you've been sort of doing your thing as a big guy, muscling your way through the paint, like, for a long time now. So why do you think it's taken this long and maybe this stage to really become sort of like this darling of the NCAA tournament in some ways? I think honestly, it's because um, they no one expected us to be here at this point. But us. so, um, yeah, I guess you know, in everyone else's eyes, it is a Cinderella story. So you know, they're they're gonna pay attention now that we're winning. But when we were losing, it didn't really matter. So maybe no, I think I think the, I, I tell these guys all the time, and uh, March is for players. I mean, how many times have you went into March and you really didn't know? you know, a player, and you came out of March and said, man, good, he's pretty good. Um, DJ Burns has been around for a long time, but, you know, um, his personality, his play has really opened the eyes to a lot of folks across the country. And, you know, it, March is not about the coaches at all. I mean, players make plays in March, and, and that's what's happening with this group. And, you know, a lot of our guys, from Michael to Mo uh, to DJ, you know, the national audience may not have known who they were but they do now because obviously the way they're playing and how far we have gone as a team. We have five minutes remaining before we dismiss the uh, student athletes to go to breakouts. Next question on the uh, right side toward the front. Hey, Glenn Gilbo from outkick.com. Uh, for the players, um, how much did you guys know about the 1983 team and Coach Valvano before you got to NC State? And, and then what did you learn or hear as your stay at as you stayed at North Carolina State. Let's begin with Michael and then move down the table. Yeah, I mean, coming into NC State, I, you know, you, you know a little bit about it, but I didn't know the whole, like, full in depth and details and everything. But as I've been here throughout this whole year, you kind of, you learn more about it through, you know, it, it's the basketball program itself or just people like the fans kind of giving you a little bit of insight. So it's been pretty cool to learn a lot more about it as time's gone on. Uh, before I come in, I don't even know like <laughs> the team, so <laughs> uh, yeah. But it was fun to learn, and we met them uh, several times this year, and it was pretty cool. They they share the experience, everything, and we love it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I known a little bit, you know, just being a basketball fan, but um, most of my knowledge prior to coming here and learning and, you know, meeting some of the guys myself would be the, the 30 for 30. That's probably the extent of my knowledge prior to. Okay, let's go in the back and then we'll come up to the front. David Teal with the Richmond Times Dispatch. Kevin, you didn't grow up far from Greensboro, just up Route 29. What would tomorrow be like in the Greensboro Coliseum if Duke and State were playing in the Elite Eight? If it was in Greensboro? Yeah. Oh, man, you must be – you're trying to take a dig at Bayhine, huh? That's what you <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it – listen, Dallas is a great place, and I'm not going to – you know, obviously, we're going to – I think we're going to have just as many fans here as we would have Greensboro. And you know my heart – you know, Greensboro is Greensboro. I grew up. You know, and Lynchburg, Virginia, watching the tournament in Greensboro, and 
It was such a special, unique place. Um, it's funny, I was thinking about it last night. I'm like, man, we both could have just flown home and played this game somewhere. Probably at, at the PNC would be what a good idea. Um, but it's it's um, it, it's going to be a great you know opportunity whether we play it in Greensboro. Would it have been great at Greensboro? Absolutely. Um, but they're not hosting a region this time, so we got to play it here. And the folks at Dallas have been great. Um, you know, NC State. I hope we've treating the, uh, treated the um, the Dallas folks great, and I hope they all come out and wear red because we will welcome them to do that tomorrow. You say you were one of the student athletes as well, or is you, okay? Now up front, right here. Mohammed, uh, I believe now seven straight games with double figure rebounds. Uh, uh, your average for the regular season was like half as many as you've been averaging in the tournament. What has been the difference? And, and how have you managed to, to, to maintain your stamina considering the fast and everything? Uh, I just crowd the ball all the time. <laughs> like, that's who I am. And they, my team know I'm a good rebounder and uh, I'm going to crash all the time. But I don't manage that. Like, I just anticipate then get a rebound as many as I can. That's it. <laughs> Before we let them go, do we have any questions, um, remaining questions for Michael, Mohammed, and DJ? Looking for hands? I don't think so. So, uh, guys, I think we're done with your questions from the interview room. We'll excuse you to go back to um, breakouts this time All right, for about so another 50 play. minutes. But oh. you're going to stay with me, Coach. <laughs> you're not going anywhere. Just playing hey, with you. Thanks Bye. for coming. Good luck. We will see you guys tomorrow. Okay, Coach is going to stay with me. Questions for him, and I think the first one will go on Coach's extreme right. Dan Walken, USA Today. Uh, Kevin, how would you describe the challenge of differentiating your program, you know, at a time and in a location where so much of the attention goes to Duke and UNC, and yet, you know, you guys have a, you know, tremendous history, tremendous fan base, and tremendous expectations yeah, I think like any place you have to carve out your own space you know um, I'm into shark tank so I watch that all the time and we talk about having shelf space and how do you get you know your product on a shelf and everything else you know well, the one thing I've always you know when I took this job I've never wanted to be compared to Duke or uh, Carolina just not who I am and we do things a little bit different and you know we want to you know, obviously, I, I try to be and get our guys to be the best version of themselves, to our program to be the best version of those uh, ourselves. Um, but we've done a good job. I mean, you think about, you know, just over the you know, last couple of years in general, you know, we're one of three teams that have made the NCAA tournament, Duke, us, and Virginia in the, in the last two years by themselves. And, you know, now we're on this, you know, nice run um, because we've carved space out and we're doing things our way. and. Um, not trying to be someone else. Uh, we're, you know, it, you know. I, I thought about this. We have two milestones that has not happened in, in, at NC State in a long time. You know, the um, ACC championship since um, '87, the you know Elite Eight since '86. I think I'm right when I say that. Um, you know, we've done a good job. We're champions, and you know that's something that you want to strive to be. And we still have an opportunity to, to win another championship in another tournament. So doesn't um, this is great for our fan base because I know obviously they get involved with it as much as anybody, but I love where we at and love what we're doing as a program. Again on the extreme right. Kevin Lutte Cock from the News and Observer. John said earlier that he reached out to you after you guys won and that you actually called him back and you guys had a conversation. Wow. You get a lot of congratulatory texts and messages. Why did you call John back, and what did you guys talk about? Well, I, last night when I got to my phone, I probably had 500 text messages, and um, I responded to each one. Um, that's just who I am, but I have a lot of respect for the coaches in our league, and you know, and not I shouldn't even say just our league, just around the country. If somebody's going to take time to reach out to me then that's the least, least thing I can do is reach out and talk and have a conversation. And I thought it was great. And, and through this run, 
Um, I've had Luke, I've had plenty of our coaches in our league and coaches across the country reach out. We're small fraternity. I know there's a lot of competition and on game day, we're going to, everybody's going to go at each other. But throughout that, you know, I think it's important that we do talk about our conference. We do talk about different things that we go through. And I thought it was, you know, great for John to reach out. Coach, let's move all the way to the extreme left now, and then we will go to Zoom. Stephen Hawkins with the AP. I'm going to ask you what I asked the players. What do you sense really different from your team's meeting against Duke in the regular season to the tournament to now? Yeah, you know, we, we, be, we have become really a very stingy basketball team on the defensive end. Our defense and numbers are so great. Um, you know, you think about last night just in general, four for 31 against a very good Marquette team who can shoot the ball behind the three-point line. Um, you know, we our deflections are up. I try to chart, you know, we try to get 40 deflections a game. I try to chart them every game, and our deflections are up. Uh, we're, our ball screen coverage has become better. You know, I thought initially we established ourselves against Marquette in the first 10 minutes on the defensive end, and then we got going offensively. I think it's just our defense have improved, and our guys are connected more on the defensive end than we've been, you know, during the regular season. Let's go to Zoom. Okay, we have another question from Roger. Roger, please unmute yourself and then restate your name and affiliation and proceed with your question. Hey, Roger Rubin from Newsday in New York. Uh, Coach, it's a question about Michael O'Connell and uh, the qualities that he brings to the team. Since, uh, since you guys have gotten onto this winning streak, I believe he's played at least 30 minutes in every game. Can you describe what it is about his game that you think is so important to have on the court to win? Well, he's playing with so much confidence. Like Michael in the regular season would go through a game and didn't care if he took two shots. And and now, you know, going into this postseason, we've asked him to do a little bit more. He's a great descript, distributor, but we've asked him to score the basketball. And he's done that. I mean, you look at his numbers, you know, I think the two most, three most important guys in the postseason that have added something to our team is Michael, Mo, and then Ben. You know, all of those guys have added something that, they, that we didn't have regular season. I also think he's found his voice. You know, it takes a little bit of time for transfers to come in and find their voice, even though he's an older guy. And now he's coaching on the floor. Everything that I envision of him being a point guard is what's happening. He scores when we need a basket. He passes his most of the time to get everybody involved. And his leadership in the locker room and doing timeouts have been really huge for us. And I think that's the biggest steps. Okay, front of the TV camera now. Coach, I was struck watching warm-ups yesterday, just looking at the body language of your team versus Marquette. You guys looked so loose and excited. And, you know, obviously there's a sense maybe of playing with house money and that, you know, this is a – every game is sort of a bonus. But at the same time, you know, as you get farther along in the tournament, the expectations do ramp up. So, you know, how have you been addressing that, you know, aspect of this tournament run? Yeah, it's weird. We are loose. I mean, we, we listen to a lot of music. I mean, we, you know, we were, we were going, um, you know, to, to go through a walkthrough this morning, and I've learned so many. And I, I grew up in an era where there were great, you know, you know rappers, and we, we had great rap songs, and I, I know I'm, I got a bunch of them. But I've learned so many different songs, different rap songs I've never seen. Here's the other thing about it. We just don't listen to rap, too. On game day, coming back from shoot-around, we, we, we put on gospel music, and we're blasting that. Is just as much as we are the rap songs, and they they know every word to each one of them. So we're loose. Uh, the the house money thing, we don't we don't look at it as house money. We didn't come here to say, hey, you've won enough, and just go out there and play, and you have nothing to lose. We do think we have something to lose. We came to win, and so we don't count on that, you know. And and that's I understand. Obviously, that's where it looks when you you come in as 11 seed and you're in the elite eight. But honestly, these guys are here to win, you know. Okay, in the back now, on the right. Uh, Kevin, Adam Teicher from ESPN. You said a couple minutes ago you thought Duke was a, a much different team than when you played him a few weeks ago. Why? What, what do you see different in them now that you didn't maybe see a couple weeks ago? I think the veterans. Um, Flip, you know, I'm calling him a veteran because obviously he's a you know, second-year guy. 
but he's playing much more aggressive. Um, I think more early in the year, he was more outside in. Now he's more inside out, and he's scoring in so many different ways and playing great. Uh, you look at the way Jeremy Roach is playing. You know, he's playing like a guy who's been in the league, who's been around for a long time, a guy who is, you know, obviously playing in the NCAA tournament at a high level. Um, you know, they, they the older guys are helping the young guys. I mean, they just are. They're doing a great job, and um, I think that's the big, biggest difference in those guys. And, and the other one as a team, they're better defensively um, than I've seen even two weeks ago. Now toward the front. Kevin, obviously it works both ways, but strictly from your standpoint, how much of an advantage with the quick turnaround is it to prepare for a team that you've already played twice in the last month as opposed to somebody you're seeing for the first time? Yeah, that's, I, I guess you're, you're right. It works both ways. Um, it, it probably helps both teams because we got a, such a short turnaround and, you know, just we're familiar. And, you know, John's like me. Can we put in 20 different plays today? No. Um, so we, you know, everybody at this point, you're going to be who you are. I think it helps that we know each other. But you think about what we had to go through in the ACC tournament. We didn't even have the one day in between to prepare, and so we just—it's almost weird because when we when we got to the NCAA tournament and we won our our first game, I'm thinking we're going to play the next day because we're so used to playing. And then you realize you got a day in between, so I, it helps. Um, but at this, I told you guys before at the beginning of this, at you know when it comes to March, players make plays. I mean, we we gonna as as a, as coaches, we pull a lot of strings and we substitute guys and we try to put them in great spots. But you see so many storylines with guys who are just making plays. Okay, now here on the uh, inside aisle on coaches left. Yeah, Rob McLean with Inside Pack Sports. If you don't mind, sir, I have two questions. My first, I asked them about your background. D3 player, the prep, Louisville, the national championship. So much of this prepares you in life for this moment. How much of it are you drawing from that? And just how, how meaningful has your past experience to helping you get where you are now? Well, I want to be an inspiration. I mean, I don't I, – you never want to hide from where you came from. And, you know, I, I spent, you know, um, a lot of time at prep school at Hargrave Military Academy and started off as assistant for a couple of years, got the head job, left, went to college, and then came back for eight years. So I had a total of 12 years. But during that time, you know, I didn't have, it wasn't a national media thing. I could call timeouts, I could draw up plays, I could, you know, practice, um, you know, make practice plans. And if I made a mistake, nobody cared. Just wasn't, you know. But I could lean on that because it helped me get better. And then obviously, you know, my experience of going on to be assistant coach, you know, I was fortunate enough to be a part of the, you know, 2013 national championship team in Louisville when we climbed on the top of the nets and cut the nets down. I worked for a guy, a great coach in Rick Patino that, you know, challenged you every day and we would do scouting reports and I couldn't have any paper in my hand and I had to remember 30 plays and present it to the team. That's also helped me because now I can remember if, if I'm in a, in a huddle, I can remember a play that back in the Big East when Pittsburgh run, ran a play, you know, five years ago and I want to present that play to my team, I can do that stuff. So my experience is at, you know, the high school grassroots level, um, being an assistant coach and then going to UNCW when I had my first job as a mid-major has paid off so much. Uh, I hope that I'm inspiring a lot of people because you don't have to be just a, you know, a power five player uh, to be you know, a power five head coach. There's other ways to get there. And you look across the country, some of the, the best coaches in the world have come from the same path that I've, I've traveled and I love it. I, I think it's great. I, if I can share with any, you know, inspiring um, young lady, young man, you know, to, to work hard and get where you are. I'm the, um, you're sitting here looking at hard work. I drove the bus at Hargrave. I, you know, I pumped the gas, I swept the floor, I washed the clothes and uh, man, I did this. The good Lord put me in this spot. So I'm glad to be here. Sorry, so much of NC State is based on history and heritage, and that's like an, an end-all, be-all at Wolfpack. Obviously, you're aligning yourself with the great teams in the past, but are you sort of trying to find that balance where, hey, let's create our own history, let's create our own mark in this university? 
No, I think history is great. And, you know, we do have great history. Uh, but what I'm learning is we've got great history, but it's been so long ago. I mean, you think about this when we won the championship and we're reminded that it's been 37 years. And then obviously we go to the lead eight. It's been, we were reminded of how long it's been. I hope that history gets a chance to repeat itself because um, this team deserves it. Um, I love this group, and if you know, we, they've already uh, etched their uh, way into the history books by winning an ACC championship. We're going to hang a banner, and those those guys in that locker room are going to be the um, you know the reason why that banner's been hung. Hadn't happened in 37 years. We're the Elite Eight. They're going to be remembered for that. But as we move on, I do hope history repeats itself because we got great history. It's just been a long time. Yeah. You know. We'll continue on coaches left and then move to the right. Hey, Griffin Cunningham, technician in Agromech. Um, before the ACC title run, there was a lot of speculation about what would happen with the team next year, whether you would be the head coach. Um, how, do you, how did you dispel and confront those, those speculations, and how do you feel about coach turnover at all levels in sports? Yeah, I think, I think, if, you, I think if you watched us over the – you know, last seven years, I don't think that you would feel that way. And here's why I say this is when I took over this program, um, they were coming off of four wins and five wins in the conference. And by the way, when I did my first opening, um, right before practice, I did my first um, press conference. Uh, it was mentioned that, you know, the FBI is investigating us. So I went through four years of not getting a recruit, losing recruits, not knowing what the NCAA was going to do to us. And, and we did it. And, and our staff, and we walked through you know, the program through it as champions and never complained. Um, we started off our first year after taking over the program. We went straight to the NCAA tournament. Should have went back the next year when we were 33 in the net and got left out. Then we had a year when they didn't have the tournament. So we've had some of those bad lucks, and, and, and it's now it's paying off at the end because at the end of the day, we have built the program. But year one, two, and three were not year one, two, and three at normal years, years because of the scrutiny that we had. Uh, anybody who has you know, had a new program while they were going through that NCAA investigation, if you remember, uh, the FBI agent came out and said, we got your playbook. Anybody that was a new coach, they had to go through that. If you were a sitting coach doing that, you were able to keep your culture and everything else. But we played musical chairs a lot because of that part of it. So I know it's a long answer, but, you know, I, I never worry about that. Um, I poured everything I have into my program, into my kids. And um, to be honest with you, I just relied on my faith and I left everything in the good Lord's hand. And whatever was going to happen was going to happen, but I was going to make sure that I did everything that I could and did everything right by those young men. We have about five minutes left in this session. We'll try to squeeze in these three questions on the right. Now on the front. Coach, uh, is there anyone in the athletic department close to the program at the school or, or at the school that that was there in 83 that's still at North Carolina State that, that you've met? Or? Oh, yeah. You know, Derek Wittenberg, is, he's on staff in the athletic department. And um, he's – Yeah, Derek, Derek's former – other than them? Uh, God, that's a tough one. You know, maybe Bobby Purcell who just – you know, he's head of the Woodpack Club. He just retired a couple of years ago. Um, we got a great, you know, we got a, you know, some great, you know, uh, guys who work around our buildings and do all of the dirty work and the great stuff to make sure that everything is fine for us who may have been there. I don't, I don't know if there's anybody else, but I, I bring up Derek Wittenberg because, you know, on that uh, air ball that he shot, he's been getting NIL since he shot that air ball. He, he says it's the past. And so what we did not know, is that NIL started a long time ago. The guy hasn't paid for a meal since he, he shot that. So he's been – now, don't report that because some of that may have been a violation if he was still playing back in the day. But I think we're past the, uh, the time. So, But I, I, don't, I don't know that. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the aisle. Yep. Hey, Kevin Gene Wong with the Washington Post. What have been some of Casey's most valuable contributions during this run, and, and how gratifying was it to see him be able to go back home and win the ACC championship? 
Yeah, I'm so happy for Casey. I mean, you know, when he transferred here, what a tough transition. He went from a great program with Tony Bennett, which a low scoring, hard hat, great defensive team, to a team who runs, who does it a different way, you know, who's got more freedom a little bit. Um, not saying either one is better than the other, but he adjusted. Um, he stuck with us a little bit. He's done a great job. You know, he's brought some defense intensity. He's brought some senior leadership to us. Um, I'm happy. I joked with him at, at D.C. I was like, man, you're the last guy standing from the DMV. At that point, it was him and Armando Baycock. I was like, whoever wins that game is going to win the DMV. Um, and you, you can explain to some of these guys later on what DMV means. Most of them won't know that part of it. But. Okay, closing questions now for Coach Extreme Right. Kevin, how much has it added to this experience of the last two weeks to have your son in the locker room? Yeah, it's it's a God, it's a it's a wonderful deal, and I never would have thought that. You know, I never coming up, I, I was that dad that would go to the high school games, and I would sit by myself because fans are crazy at high school games, parents are crazy, and they would talk trash, and then everybody would look at me when the referee would make a bad call because I was a coach, and I wouldn't respond. I wouldn't. I just would look straight ahead. And I never really tried to coach him at the games because I knew all, all eyes would be on me to figure out, you know, hey, could I could validate whether it's a bad call or not. And I did most of my coaching when he got home. We would sit down and talk. Um, but I love both of my kids, and it was it's great. You know, we, we talked about, you know, what was he going to do for college? And, you know, uh, he said, I wanted to kind of go to NC State and stay with you. And um, secretly, that was a great deal because I was so pumped about that. I loved it. And it's great to have him around. You know, he does, um, you know, I just, it's just great. It's, a, it's, a, it's hard to describe uh, unless you have a son who has played for you or a daughter who have played for you, but um, he brings a lot of value. He's, he's smart. I don't know what path he's going to take. Uh, I'm going to do my best to convince him not to get into coaching. Uh, I'm going to tell him about that stuff, but it's special. It's really special, and um, I get to – the problem with it is I get more time to see him uh, than his mother, and he lives in the same – you know, he, we're right there in the same area, and he doesn't come home, and she complains to me. And I said uh, – and who, by the way, he loves to death. But, you know, once those kids go to college, I don't care if they're 10 minutes away or they're five hours away, they're going to stay away unless they have to come home for their dirty clothes or something like that. But it's special. It's, it's, it means everything to me. Hey, Coach, thank you so much. We're out of time. And Thanks, guys. We appreciate you coming. We'll see you tomorrow. Good luck. Appreciate you. Thank, thank you, Coach. You. So you were at the Bill? Huh? I work Kentucky Derby every year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. I'll see you.